Hi everybody, this is Trevor Jones from astrobackyard.com and in this video I want to talk about a really critical piece of gear, something I've had for years now. And oftentimes you'll find in astrophotography there's really expensive things you can buy that make a little bit of a difference and you know it's sometimes it's hard to justify it. This one's the opposite where it's a little investment for a huge advantage. The object I'm talking about is a clip-in DSLR filter specifically an H-alpha DSLR filter. So this is the Astronomic 12 nanometer HA filter and it clips inside of the camera body. There's so many different types of filters and sizes out there, but it's this clip-in design that I really love. And there's one huge reason why. It's the fact that they can be used with a camera lens like the Rokinon 135 I just talked about. So it sits inside of the camera body and you can put the lens right on top. Why is it a big deal to take shots in hydrogen alpha with a DSLR camera and lens for astrophotography? First of all, it means that you can shoot during a full moon and capture useful data. Normally, before you start shooting in narrow band in general, a full moon night means that, you know, the camera stays away, you work on other things, or, or just targets that lend itself well to a full moon, like star clusters. You don't want to shoot nebulae, in broadband true color or galaxies. But a hydrogen alpha filter ignores all that moonlight, just as powerful the, the city light pollution that you're in, and just captures that selective isolated gases in the H alpha wavelength. So that's at the 656 nanometer wavelength on the visible spectrum. And that's where you find the incredible data from most of the objects in the night sky that we photograph. Emission nebula is very strong, but you'll even find HA in galaxies as well. You'll see nebula within the galaxy itself. It's a very powerful combination uh, to have a clip-in HA filter with your DSLR camera. Now, there are a few caveats to this. First of all, the cameras that you can use and the lens compatibility. So, as I said, this one is for Canon DSLR cameras. This is a crop sensor DSLR, so obviously the body changes for a full-frame DSLR. Now, I know that Astronomic does make a 12 nanometer HA filter for full frame cameras as well. And then there's also a 6 nanometer version. So, all that means is that it's even more narrow of a band pass, that it's a line filter. So, just a very specific band pass. Now, the 12 nanometer I like because it's kind of the sweet spot where it's actually not blocking out so much light that it's hard to focus on stars or frame up your target but enough to still shoot in under heavy moonlight. The 12 nanometer version is also more affordable than the six. I initially bought the 12 because it was more affordable, but I found it to be extremely useful. Now, as far as the lenses, they have to be the Canon EF style on these Canon cameras. The EFS style goes in a little too deep in the camera body. So uh, it's, they're not super common, but it is a crop sensor DSLR lens that the EFS lens mount. So, EF lenses only, so luckily ones like the Nifty 50, the, the 50 millimeter 1.8, very affordable. This is a $100 lens, it's EF lens mount, no problem with a clip-in filter like this. And ones like the 24 to 105, uh, extremely useful, versatile zoom lens for astrophotography. So I just love a clip filter like an HA. I've used lots of clip filters and talked about them on this channel, the light pollution filters, the, the Optolong L Pro. If you're gonna get one clip-in filter with your DSLR, make it an HA first, it's the most powerful. You can add that data to existing color projects and you can capture it on a night when, when the moon is out in the city and just isolate those narrowband HA details, add them to your color broadband images that you took on a moonless night. Of course, you can use a clip-in filter with your DSLR through a telescope as well. Uh, but that, then you're in the range of maybe it makes more sense to get a two inch filter that you can use with all sorts of cameras. The, the big thing about the clip-in filter is being able to use it with a lens. And if you've ever seen it like a wide angle HA shot using a camera lens and a DSLR, man, they're just mind blowing. If you can see it on the screen here, I'll bring it up. This is the North American Nebula and the Pelican Nebula with a lot of surrounding nebulosity in the constellation Cygnus. This is with the Rokinon 135 lens my Canon T3i DSLR and uh, in that astronomic 12 nanometer clip filter. Now I should say, and you've probably been wondering this the whole video, I haven't addressed it yet, modified or not, whether it is 
makes sense to get a narrowband HA filter with an unmodified stock DSLR camera? I believe that it does. I've shot, and this is really going against conventional logic, but I seem to do that a lot. I've shot uh, the Eagle Nebula using my Canon 7D, which is a stock camera, using the HA filter, and it was enough to collect some really useful isolated signal of that hydrogen emission in the Eagle Nebula. That's with a stock camera. That being said, you're gonna get much better results if your camera is modified. This one is a full spectrum mod. There's, there's places that will do it for you. I know Spencer's camera does it, or you can just do it yourself, which was the case with my Canon XSI, just removing that stock IR cut filter. So if you have a, a modified camera, uh, a DSLR HA clip filter makes a whole lot of sense. You need to go out and get one right now if you don't already. The reason I feel so strongly about it is because I bought this astronomic clip filter in uh, summer of 2016 and I shot for years and years before actually shooting narrowband with my DSLR and to say it was a game changer uh, is putting it lightly because after that I started creating these HA RGB composite images and just being able, it, it doubled my imaging time being able to shoot under a full moon and that's a really powerful thing. So at this point you might be wondering to yourself, okay, so I've shot these images using this narrowband HA filter in my DSLR camera. It's a color camera, it's one shot color. You know, I've heard that you're not supposed to shoot narrowband with a color camera because you're only getting a quarter of the signal. All that's true, but I think that you can actually get some really useful uh, practical details using a color camera and narrowband filters. So just to prove my point, let's have a look at these shots I recently took of the North American Nebula through the Rokinon lens, my T3i modified DSLR, and the Astronomic 12 nanometer HA filter. So these are tracked shots at ISO 1600, and they, they look very, very red. That's, that's how it's gonna look using an HA filter with your DSLR camera. So you can also see that really punchy details of that emission nebula just jumping out of there. So this was on a nearly full moon night. I believe it was 70%. You probably saw this image in my last video if you saw it. So at this point, you would just stack these images, these, these raw DSLR images, the way you normally would in, in your stacking software like Deep Sky Stacker. And then you'll end up with uh, an image similar to the way you would with a color image with a better signal to noise ratio. And I've actually got it opened up here in Photoshop. This is kind of what Deep Sky Stacker spit, spit out. Well, it is what it spit out. And uh, just to show you how it works here, and I, I talked about this a long time ago, but it's useful for anyone that didn't know. I've got the color, the channels tab open here to look at the channels. So obviously in RGB, that's just crazy red. We don't want that. But look at the red channel. Do you see the details in there when you compare it to the green and the blue channels where there's hardly any signal, no useful signal is in there. So what you need to do is extract that red channel. I'm just gonna copy it, select all copy, and make a new image that's just gonna be that grayscale data of the HA layer. Then with this layer, this channel, you're just gonna process it the way you normally would an RGB image, you know, with curves and to bring out the details, you might wanna do some noise reduction or sharpening, but it's, this is a lot of fun because there's some strong isolated signal in here. What you choose to do with the data after this is up to you, whether it's just a black and white image, those are really beautiful, impactful images, or you can add it to existing color images. You can layer it on top as, as like a luminance layer, or insert it into the red channel uh, to get a real huge punch in, in the red there. So there's so many things you can do. I have an HA RGB tutorial where I kind of go through this in detail on the California Nebula, but I just wanted to show you what you actually do with the images with a DSLR and an HA filter like this. So there's the North American Nebula, and I do have a few more examples here that I can show you on different targets using this astronomic 12 nanometer HA filter. So here is the Horsehead Nebula, that's a good one. Uh, and then I've got also the Heart Nebula. And what else we got? This one was really nice, the Butterfly Nebula in Cygnus around that star Seder. So these were all shot with a DSLR camera with that 12 nanometer HA filter. I also have the two inch version that I've threaded into my field flattener of my refractor telescope. And I believe that's what I used 
for this one. This is through the Z73 telescope. Uh, and then what else do we have here? The Sol Nebula, that was a good one. And uh, all of these, I, I don't remember the exact dates, but I believe all of these were shot during a nearly full moon. So that's kind of the way I operate, and a lot of DSLR astrophotographers do. that own an HA filter. They shoot HA, or narrowband in general, when the moon is full, and then shoot broadband RGB when it's around the new moon phase. They shoot in color, get those natural details, and kind of finish off the image. Uh, but it's fun to just shoot in HA as well. I know a lot of people that do that. So looking at this Sol Nebula image here in HA, I'll show you the, the adding it to RGB details for an HA RGB composite. So I've got more, it's a bit drastic this look, it's a little bit unnatural looking. This was kind of, you know, I think this was a couple years ago. And, but I've added that HA data to a color image to really get the punch. And uh, so not only does it add a punch, but it keeps those stars small and sharp and uh, just has it makes for, a, uh, for some really dramatic looking images. Just for comparison, because I, I, I spoke about a, a six nanometer version of the filter, uh, I haven't shot with the six nanometer astronomic filter, but I have shot through the seven nanometer uh, Optolong version, and this was through the Red Cat, and it's my image of the Rosette Nebula. So um, the processing was slightly different, but you can see that stronger contrast in the image because it's a more narrow band pass at six nanometers, so even more targeted, better if you really want to isolate details and you know cut out everything else. But it does make you know framing and focusing your target a little bit harder because it's so strong. You're only the brightest stars are going to come through. Uh, I've mentioned that a few times about what it's like to to focus and frame your targets with an HA filter, and it is more difficult, but it's worth all the effort. That's for sure. So going back to the here's the final version of the, of the North American Nebula in HA and this is kind of what spurred on the whole thing I just figured you know what I wanted to use this 135 lens again and uh, it was a almost a full moon night so shot it in HA through this lens and my goodness I'll be doing a lot more of shots like this of, of HA using a camera lens and it just reminded me of how powerful it is to use a clip-in filter with your DSLR narrowband HA clip-in filter that can fit underneath a camera lens. Man, it opens up the doors to a lot more astrophotography, especially if you haven't entered this territory before. So now you kind of know my stance on it. I've been using it for years and years and still love it. Uh, I think it's a really practical, useful choice. So I can't say enough about these clip-in HA filters for your DSLR. I hope this was useful to you. If it was, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a comment. I'd love to know what your thoughts are. And as always, clear skies.